Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn hey! and Bruce McGowan. It's a pleasure. And uh, Vern, why don't you introduce our guest? Wow, well, you know, this is really, you know, this is, yeah, screw Bill Mayer. Well, we got, we got. <laughs> I agree. We've got, we have got the man right here. We've got Will Durst, the number one political comedian we got in the country, and we have him live in studio. There's nothing that this cat has not done. I mean, Letterman, HBO, I mean, you name it, he's done it, and uh, it just comes up with just dynamite political comedy everywhere he goes. I think he got me mixed up with somebody else. Oh, Mr. come on, Glenn. man. Thank oh, you for that on. I have clawed my way to the middle. <laughs> and uh, I gotta say that this this being on Sports Econ 101 has got to be the highlight of my career. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're so, waiting for. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, you're you're quite a sports fan though. I mean, I see Will at the Giants games. Yeah, we and Debbie are just hardcore Giants fans, 49er fans, right? Yes, and yeah. uh, Packer fan because of oh, Wisconsin. Oh, okay, of there you go. You gotta and, gotta support the hometown team. But uh, back in '91, Debbie and I did 50, uh, 35 15 second commercials for the Giants. We did all those mm. promotional commercials. I remember that. So we got paid in season tickets. Sweet. And, and oh. we've had those season tickets ever since. And they got privatized when you know they moved to. Uh, well, 90, uh, 90, uh, when was the, the sale? 90, 90, 93? 93, yeah, and, then, 93 and, then, and, then they, and then they moved to, to Pacwell, AT&T, yeah. whatever, in yep. 2000. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about the season tickets. I had a friend who did a Sports Illustrated. Uh, he decided to set the world record for uh, downhill skiing in eight hours. So he'd ski downhill, he'd have a helicopter, bring him to the top, ski down again. He did that for eight, eight hours, hours straight, and he was smart Jeez. enough to go to the Giants. He was a big Giants fan, so he went to the San Francisco Giants uh, ahead of time and said, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be in Sports Illustrated. I love the Giants. What will you give me if I wear a Giants hat for, for when they take a picture of me for Sports Illustrated? Yeah. And the Giants said, we'll give you season tickets for life. Wow. wow. Just for wearing Wow. Wow. Sweet. No that, and, that was, and there was a candlestick. But when he, they moved to AT and T Park, they honored they it. honored it. Wow! Right behind the home plate. So he's so tickets, tickets for tickets for life. Wow. So that, that that proves ask. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. you, all you have to do is ask. Yeah. And let me tell you something, guys. Man, he cashed in because you, know, oh, you look yeah. at the baseball. You look at the baseball power rankings. Who's number one? Yeah. The San Francisco Giants. Or the, yeah, I was going to say the Yankees. Well, they, were, they, 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 they have the best record in all yeah. of baseball. That all of them. Me. Doesn't that worry you? This it, early? It, it does worry me because, you know, you always run into those bumps in the road. And we remember, we longtime Giant fans remember the June swoon. June, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, not only that, but <laughs> the last two times, 2012, 2010, we... We got hot in September and October. It's all about September and October. It is. Yeah. It True. Is. You know, you don't want to get hot in May. No, but you know, here, everyone's chasing you. That's yeah. Right. But here's the thing. I think if you're a longtime Giants fan, you're happy because you finally won two championships. As far as I'm concerned, they don't ever have to win again, and I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> don't curse it. But well, I gotta believe if you're if you're a member of that team, though, I mean, you're enjoying oh, yeah. the view from the top. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's that's where you want to be. Yeah. But, you know? but don't forget last year that the Dodgers won a 40. 42 and 8. Yeah. 34 games yeah. over 5. And, and they are due to hit they are due yeah. to hit a hot spot. Yeah. Wasn't that when they show up finally they when they got Yasiel Puig? Yes. That's when yeah. they yes. And that's when the Giants lost Angel Pagan to an injury right, right at yeah. the same time. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. And look, it's number two in the power rankings, the Oakland Athletics. Yeah, that's a, that's even a bigger story. Isn't I think that great? Who would have thought the A's would have, you know, with their two top pitchers out? Yeah. And a bunch of, you know, we've talked about We had Billy Bean on last week. We were talking about the nobodies. The, the I don't know how he does it. With yeah. gum and chewing, <laughs> chewing gum and rubber bands and <laughs> spit. And Josh Donaldson. Who is this guy? Josh Reddick. You know, you know and if you're the, Gray. Gray. the New York Yankees, which entertain the A's this week, I mean, they got to be. They got to be scratching their head. Oh. Like, yeah, they're hovering around twenty-three and whatever, and yeah. they're like, "Well, that's what I was asking Billy about last week." I said, "Well, that's the idea. You pay these guys so low that they yeah. get so hungry, they work so hard. Yeah. You know, after a guy gets a two hundred million dollar contract, it's like the only reason he has to work hard is just so he doesn't get embarrassed for yeah. all that money." These Good guys, point. I mean, these guys are hungry. I mean, and and, yeah. and they don't fear anybody. No, just like Will Durst when he gets uh, a microphone in his hand. But, but the, Yankees, the Yankees got uh, Tanaka. Who's what eight and one right yeah, now? Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's hot. And and he's got like a one point. He's got a Gibson ERA. And and the rest of their staff, the rest of their starting staff, is like what four and a half ERA? <laughs> Not very good. And Sabathia just good. went down. Yeah, he's got the knee. Yeah, no, they've, they've got problems. So yeah. all they have to do is just have him pitch every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'll work for about a, a week, and that's about it. Now, uh, 
Well, let's push sports aside for just a minute, because just before we got on the air, you wanted to ask Will about politics. Cause uh, well, 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 well. As, as as a political comedian, I, I, I'm just I'm just fascinated by your life, which I guess has to be an, an ever kind of evolving kind of thing, from a material standpoint. Because I mean, your stuff in right. your stuff in '04. Baby can't work you, 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 in 2012. You can't say it's all Bush's fault anymore. Yeah. I mean, but, 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 just, but just just break it down for me. I mean, I would I would think your peak is anything from the, the year before the election year to maybe the year after. But just break it down for no, me. No, you're exactly right. My, my career has a sine wave. There's there's the election, presidential election year, the quad radio. Mm -hmm. right? just, that's the peak. And then the trough is the year after the presidential, because yeah. people don't want to hear about politics. They right. Do. And then yeah. the midterms, which is this year, that's about halfway. And then next year is about halfway to the peak because they're already running. And then I got the quadrennial again. So I'm. And what I did, and I had this great show in 2012 because everybody knew all the candidates. Sure. Everybody led mm -hmm. Romney at one point on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. You know, Perry, Christie, Kane, yeah. Bachman, Turner, Overdrive, they yeah. all yeah. left <laughs> right. at one point. And, and, and they so, were all and, open targets, too. Oh, my God. And <laughs> yeah. Kane, yeah. Michelle yeah. Bachman. Oh, yeah. So, but on November 7th, the day after the election, 2012, my, my, my entire, I had two hours. And it evaporated. Nobody, <laughs> nobody gave a rat's ass about mm -hmm. Rick no. Perry or Rick Santorum or no. Rick Gingrich or any other Ricks that were running. So I, I wrote this show about being a baby boom because you know I'm not like the guy that you mentioned earlier, the guy on HBO or John Stewart. You know they, they're good mm -hmm. and what they do. They all have 15 writers. So you look at the end of that show. Oh, they're they're the WalMarts of political comedy. I'm a small boutique in Soho. <laughs> And stitching every like joke. That. It's so something. it takes me a year to write twenty minutes. Yeah, how is that? I mean, you got to come up with your own stuff. And yeah, these other guys, they got fifteen writers that just kind of knock on the door. Hey, uh, right. Bill, how does this sound? Yeah, yeah, it's but like, that's, yeah a, no. that's a skill too. I yeah. mean, they're yeah. they're seeing those jokes that they're reading on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's the third or fourth time they've seen that joke. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because for the writers come in and they got. They got five pages, maybe seventy-five jokes, and he checks off yeah. which ones he likes, and mm -hmm. he gets it back, and then they rework them, and they hone them, and they checks them off again, and then they put them in the teleprompter. Boom! Uh, I'm still working on the Adlai Stevenson. Ads. <laughs> <laughs> well, curious. that's that's why I'm hoping for Clinton and Bush, because then I can bring back all my 1992 yeah. material. Hey, I'm curious. You know, I'm I'm a student of history, and and the greatest political commentator this country's ever produced probably was Will Rogers. I mean, uh, yeah. who oh, and he said things like, you know, we'll hold a distinction of being the only nation in the history of the world that ever went to the poorhouse in an automobile. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm wondering, that was yeah. during the Depression. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that oh, pretty yeah. good? He's got yeah. 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 Mark Twain. Like yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mark Twain, of course, you know, preceded him. But I'm wondering if you get some of your inspiration. I mean, that's going back a long way. Some mm -hmm. of our listeners don't know who Will Rogers is, but he was the preeminent political commentator yeah during the Depression, or during a time when America desperately needed a laugh. Yeah, well, I have a joke that's amazing, and I, and I didn't know he did it until I did it on stage, and then someone said, you know, uh, Rogers did that joke, mm. and my joke is about Obama. I don't know why Obama, everybody's so angry at Obama, he hasn't done anything. Mm. You know? And, <laughs> and, and I mean, it turns out, yeah. <laughs> I guess it can always be better. Okay, think about it. we're going to cut to our first commercial break here, and the theme is sports oddities. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, who is the highest paid sportsman, not in count, not counting endorsements? So just paid for his sport, Ooh, okay? okay? The first three emails with the correct answer are going to win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Email edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question, who is the highest paid sportsman, not counting endorsements? I got an idea. Okay. Oh. I, I have an idea. Don't say it yet. You know how this works. We gotta okay. wait till after we come back to the commercial break. So don't touch that dial. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, and we have a special guest, political comedian Wilders. Stay tuned. Comic. <laughs> is it is it uh, Mayfield, the, the boxer? I was gonna guess Cristiano Ronaldo. Ooh, that was going to be my yeah, guess. A, a so but it sounds like a soccer player. Yeah, I, 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 I figured it was because boxers. I figured it was one of these Premier League. Yeah. 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 Not, it, it, and I'll give you a hint. It's not Mike Tyson. Is it a boxer? Pacquiao. I'm not saying nothing. Manny Pacquiao. Ain't saying nothing. You'll like it. Mayweather. 
Mayweather or Pacquiao? He doesn't Mayweather. fight, though. Neither one of them fight. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe last year or two What years a life ago. for Roger Mayweather. He just he could just sit back and just just just, just pick, okay, this Patsy, that Patsy. He can, I mean, he, he. Why isn't he fighting? He's Pacquiao? like, he's like, he's like a, he's, he's like a lottery maker. The guy, I feel anybody sorry. he picks, they, they uh, hit the lottery. The yeah. guy I feel sorry for is Andre. Like, Warner. I can't get a fight. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to fight him. He hasn't fought in nineteen yeah. months. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he, got the management thing too. Yeah, he's got a, man, he's got a problem with the manager. Now he'd be a good guess. We should he, have he, you know what? Um, he would, someone, he would have to do it. Sometime. Someone put me on. Yeah, he's very with well Andre, very well spoken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I got his number. So if you yeah. know, okay, Bert, you know Andre Ward. Don't yeah, you? I, I didn't. I didn't know he had. A, I didn't know he had a management. Uh, He's got a major with, problem with the management. Yeah, there was a bigger piece about it in the Chronicle. About, you mean you, you mean you mean the Showtime guys? You mean the no, it's or, no, or his no, personal he, manager? Personal manager. There's uh, some problems there. He's trying. I think he's trying to fire him or something. Or the guy. He's got him locked into some Kane. contract. I think he's, he's got. It's really ugly. It's an ugly situation. You mean Virgil? Is he trying to, I he's trying to get rid I don't of, know if it's Virgil. I don't know. Virgil Thompson? I don't no, know. I think it's Virgil Hunter. Is that I his? Know, I don't know. Uh, you know, look up the, uh, if you Google him, there was a good piece in the Crown, Crown about uh, two weeks ago about the whole thing. These guys, I mean, these, guys, these, Crown, these guys have been Crown, with him not, since, not uh, Crown, Crown, these Crown, guys Crown. have been with him since he was a kid. Yeah. I can't believe, wow. I don't know. Guys right? Did he yeah. sign with somebody else? I, I don't know. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. I just know he's having some. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Yeah, problems. Yeah, that would be good to have him on for that. Yeah, no, yeah. Great. That's great. Yeah. Yep. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bernie Glenn. What's up, America? And Bruce McGowan. Yes. And special guest, Will Durst. Yo. Okay. <laughs> uh, we cut to our first commercial break. We ask this trivia question. Who is the highest paid sportsman, not counting endorsements? Answers. My My guess is Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. And he plays foosball. Uh, well, some, well may, some may call it that. <laughs> a, different, a different brand of foosball. Foosball. Yeah. Foosball. 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 I'm going to say one of the boxers, like uh, Mayfield or Pacquiao. What do you think, Will? What do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be Colin Kaepernick next year. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they want to get that done. For... Michael Schumacher from Formula Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. And they, they talk about horse racing, racing as the sport of kings. That's the sport. Of what kings. year? Uh, just recently. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I don't. I thought Schumacher was out. I, he didn't. He didn't race last well, year. I know he's injured, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's 2013. Maybe yeah. 2013. Okay. Right? Or 2012. Close I think that's 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably has a uh, trick one question. Of, what if he has one of those J.P. Morgan corporate bank cards? You ever seen these cards? These you have the you have to have a. I think you have to be worth what twenty five million to get yeah, this card right. or something like that, and there's all kind. Of, I mean, it's oh, it's really? it's it, like it, card. it's like the black card on steroids. Uh, you know, that yeah. reminds me. There's an app. obsidian. because yeah. <laughs> they, they call them different names. Yeah. Yeah. There's diamond and platinum. There's, a, there's a padlock on that card. You, gotta, yeah. you know, well, you know, it's funny. Just for some reason that reminds me. There's a there's an app apparently that you can buy that costs a thousand dollars to put on your iPhone. And what does it do? Nothing. Wow! <laughs> Seriously, the whole idea is just so you can show people. I spent. Yeah, let me help me hit my app. Oh, are you serious? I, it's either it's wow. either a thousand or eight thousand. Who pays for that? Who? It's people who just have this ego. They just have nothing yeah. else to do with their yeah. money. Yeah. Look, people with money. Yeah, I, I got this app. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's got to be something like it gets you into a party. No, or something. it's just the idea of being able to just. Say, it's like a pet rock. Doesn't do anything. I, I got to ask Will before we get into sports. What do you think? And I, I don't want to get off on a tangent about this, but what do you think of the the disparity? of income today in the United States. I, w I look back as a, a historian of this country and fascinated by history at the Gilded Age of the late 19th century when you had the Morgans and the Rockefellers and mm -hmm. people like that running the country. I mean, what's going on today? What I is think, happening? I think you're exactly right. I, yeah. I, 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 well, you know, I mean, for for the Walton yeah. family, it's six members of the Walton family own as much money as the bottom 41% of America. Ooh, wow. Yeah, John, John Boy, 40 rich. No, different oh, no, Walters. Different Walters. Yeah, different Walters. <laughs> <Walter. laughs> <Different Walter. laughs> now, yeah. now couldn't, they get, couldn't they pay for the health care coverage of Walmart employees and still be worth as much as the bottom 34%? It's, it's interesting that you mention mean? that because my business partner teaches economics. Mm. He was talking about that. And it's mm. interesting because I, I'm the conservative one in the right. family, family. He's the liberal mm -hmm. one, just like you. And, uh, and so he was saying that it, like the disparity has become, I mean, we all know that disparity has gotten crazy here, but uh, it was like the top, oh gosh, I want to say the, the top three families control like 
you know, twenty five percent or something ridiculous in all the wealth yeah. in the yeah. United States. Top four hundred fans. Wow, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so it's almost like it's almost like England during the uh, you know the days it's of the It's French Empire. Revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Talking about the halves and the half. Well, well, he was talking about how Henry Ford, way back, you know, when let's say minimum wage, whatever, was you know three bucks. I'll give you an example, and he was paying his employer employees like double that mm. so that they could afford to buy the to car buy the car. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and then that's what was going on was that you know these kind of spurred the economy completely. Yeah. So like for Walmart, everyone gets paid really low, and they wonder why people can't buy their goods because mm -hmm. they're not yeah. getting paid enough. Because they probably would go to Walmart Walmart to buy their... Uh, well, I have a plan. I mean, my plan is to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everybody's plan. I think that's the problem. Everybody wants to get rich. Yeah, well, that's why you can't run a class yeah, war yeah. in America. I know, I know. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking back to Cornelius Vanderbilt. You know, he owned the railroad. He owned half the railroads back in the in the late 19th century, and somebody said, hey, what about the public? He goes, the public be damned. Oh, wow. right. You know, that's and right. that's, let, well, that's, that that's was, uh, yeah. that's Miss Marie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss Marie. Okay, yeah. let's, let's get into a little yeah. sports here. Okay. Sports is better. So, um, <laughs> sports is better, yes. <laughs> you, know, that's what, you know what, that's why I like reading the comics, because yes. it's not depressing. My the daughter reads the comics every morning, and she reads them to me, and it, it I laugh so hard. Yeah, so hard. I think she's a future comedian. You know, she had to go to the Wilder School of Comedy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I did not go to school. Did you get into comedy at an early age? Were you? Uh, I uh, well, yeah. Were you always a funny guy? I have a brother who's developmentally disabled. That's uh -huh. what they call him now, right? Uh -huh. And we we call him mentally retarded. We didn't know nothing. But uh, Marky is, uh, and he would sit around the table, and he's not he's not vocal. You know, I mean, he's a he, he can't speak, but we could make him laugh yeah. sitting around the Ooh. dining room table. Mm -hmm. And that became the currency oh, in our yeah. family was to make Marky laugh. You, you know, you run into him right. or something. And, you know, and, and that, so we were all, and they were all, my dad was hysterical. Man. My dad was dry. You know, I mean, oh. you never knew where it was coming <laughs> from. That you're walking away and you go, ha! And you realize, yeah. So. Did you want to be a comedian, though, from an oh, early age? Really? Yeah, wow. my mom says that at an age six, I asked where I could go to school to become a stand-up comic. Mm. And uh, I started out in Milwaukee, which was a bad choice because comedy is illegal in Milwaukee. Yeah. Right. How's that? <laughs> Through a bizarre licensing law, because in the 50s when they wrote all the municipal codes, comics were MCs for strippers, so they wrote them under the same license. Oh, wow. So to this day, uh. if you want to have a stand-up comedy show in Milwaukee, you're supposed to buy a nude dancing license. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's Does that mean we're going to see you dance nude? <laughs> oh man, not, not here. Not, 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 not tomorrow. That, that's only for your wife, Debbie, right? <laughs> that you mean, not, not even there. But you, know, but you know, that could be that that could be a good act if you were if you were a real good looking woman and you took a garment of clothing off for every joke. For every you joke. Told. Oh, yeah. or, <laughs> during a set. There you go. Is that like strip poker? Yeah, because yeah, because oh, comedy. Yeah. Just think yeah. at the end of the set you get that you know, you get that payoff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> run into the guy that says, oh, comic, oh, tell us a joke. Yeah. Oh, hey, come on, be funny. And, and I, and, you know, just like uh, you guys, you know, because you're famous and you're recognized here in the Bay Area, I have an automatic response of, hey, you're a comic? Yeah, tell me a joke. So my immediate response, without even thinking, I've done this so many times, is, you're a good-looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and usually he, he just stares at me and goes, yeah. <laughs> I know I tell people like, well, I only had six years of high school, so I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so right, Phil, Nickel, Phil Nicholson, mm -hmm. uh, if you guys remember just recently. Lefty? Lefty, Lefty. Lefty exactly. FBI investigation for insider trading. I heard about that. So, Did you hear about this, Will? Yeah, Carl Icahn. He's getting yeah. everybody in trouble. Yeah. 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 It, wasn't he the responsible for the Martha Stewart thing there as well? I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. I see, uh, Edwards is an expert here. Well, I, all I know is that uh, yeah, Martha, right. is that Buzz Lightyear <laughs> asked Martha Stewart <laughs> on a date, and you know where they went? To no. Infinity and Ed. Oh, 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 that is oh, oh, good. That's okay. good. So the, here's oh. my thing about this whole insider trading thing. The agents, the FBI agents, approached him after the first round. And my question is, why couldn't they wait until after the tournament? Mm. He's not going anywhere. Everyone knows he's going to be hanging around. It's not like he's a flight risk or anything. Yeah, but it's the FBI. I mean, they take themselves seriously. They got the 
shades even at night. They've got the little microphones in their sleeves. Like, hey, come on. It's, uh, so, I, so I guess they're doing they're the curing cancer by, yeah. by waiting until after the first round. Right. Also, so he good. was six strokes behind uh, after the first day. I mean, they didn't oh, know okay. if he was going to make the cut. Mm -hmm. but, it would have been cool. A, a really, a really important putt in the, in the past. Yeah, I get just steps on his, his balls. <laughs> and you're coming with me. We got questions. <laughs> so it wasn't a distraction because he came back on Friday and played well enough to play the weekend. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good. I'm yeah. going to see Efren Zimbalist Jr. coming onto the uh, yeah. the, the ninth hole and pulling this guy off the, the course. Jeez, crazy. For those who don't remember, yeah, the FBI, 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 yeah, that's right. He just passed away. He just he passed away. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's he got yeah. a daughter. Why was he chipping? Well, his dad was some sort of a, a singer or actor, very oh, really? famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah very famous. famous. Yeah. yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, in in uh, what is it? Uh, not in, in New York during the t during the turn of the century when they have vaudeville. He was a big vaudeville. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Moving on here, uh, a $40 million settlement on likeness in video games. Uh, remember we, a few weeks ago we had a right. couple of yeah. the NCAA, NCAA, Ed O'Bannon. Mm -hmm. Remember he was suing them. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, you can't just use my, my likeness on, uh, you know, for without, without his permission. Without, without yeah, permission. right. Sure. And so apparently there's 100,000 athletes involved. Whoa, 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 whoa. hundreds of thousands uh, yeah. of athletes. I, 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 how does that work? Uh, you know, I, I, that's a good question because I don't think. Are they, they including Division that. Two, Division <laughs> Three? What? Okay, that's a good point. I, I, they didn't name all hundred thousand. I couldn't name them right now. Wow. Okay. So how many teams in Division One? Like what? Two hundred and fifty some odd. Yeah. yeah. Two hundred fifty. How many basketball players well, I, had a team? My question is: Would 15? they really need the hundred, hundred thousand likenesses for doing video games? Well, it's a big database, so I mean, you're you're coming yeah, up with you only all got kinds. five basketball players on each side, <laughs> and, and, and most people only know like one or two on each, maybe. So, but I guess maybe what they're doing is going back in time too. So, yeah. so it's a forty million dollar settlement, hundred thousand athletes. Do the math. He, the average one gets four hundred bucks. Jeez. Some people will make maybe if they if they settle. Yeah, if they settle. Uh, they, they, so oh, they did settle. They did settle. Okay, all Some right. Some people are going to get less than four hundred. Some people will get more than four hundred. Wow. Okay. okay. Careful there, boys. Well, um, and uh, the funny thing is, the legal fees have already exceeded thirty-four million. So I don't. They didn't say whether or not that was already paid. And wow. Forty million. I think that's what happened because there's no way they're going to go from forty <coughs> less thirty-four to six million. Well, there's lawyers down the hall. We there's can just lots have, of lawyers. We can ask them if the, the judge can also get the plaintiff to pay the uh, uh, the lawyers' fees. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I think they've already been paid. Mm. You know. Interesting. It's like so everybody gets a split six million. No, no, no. I think it's forty million. I think what happened was the, they already paid the thirty-four. That's why the average athlete gets four hundred dollars. Uh, well, so like we the are in the wrong industry. Well, exactly. Like these attorneys. You know, I, I talk to class action attorneys, and it's kind of interesting because I can see their point. Where um, hold on, you know what? We're gonna have to cut to another break. I'll tell you in just just a minute. Oh, you oh, got so involved, you forgot, you forgot, you forgot to look at the clock. The clock. Okay, here we We're go. holding. Which two countries are the only ones to have competed? since the modern Olympics started in 1896. All right? First three emails with the correct answer when a free three-day, three-night stay at Lighthouse Resort. Greece is one. Greece is one. That's a hint. But don't say okay. All right. All right. Hey, boy, you got a comedian in here. And you know, That's right. That's right. Okay, which two countries are the only two countries that have competed since the modern Olympics started in 1896? Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Okay. Oh, both summer and winter? Uh, no, just, so just summer. summer. Just okay. probably I don't summer. think Greece does a lot in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be U.S. Like and the, obviously in all the Here Russia comes the Greek both hockey right? team. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing like the, the Jamaican England? bobsled team. England? Also. I would say England. England. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they've always been fun. And I'm just thinking of someone that. close to Greece. Who could have made it for the first time? <laughs> I always remember that movie. Oh, was it 1896? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the, what was the film about, about the, the British runners that are running oh, along yeah, the water? Chariots of Fire. Chariots of uh, Fire. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you have fun, Will, with the steroid era? With all that was going on? No. Uh, how much steroids did you do? <laughs> I, uh, the Andro really helped on, uh, on Friday nights uh, <laughs> when you get to do that second show. Yeah, that's what I want to ask you. Which, 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 which president gave you gave you the most amount of material? Oh yeah, that, that lasted the that, 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 that had the longest staying power. Reagan, yeah. Reagan, Clinton, and Bush. Yeah, there you go. Because they were all eight years. Obama yeah, is tough. So. Obama because there's no scandal. You know he's so deep, deep, smooth, deep, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. So let me well, hold on. Before you go back on, yeah. is there 
There's a little short. Yeah, there's a little short. Yeah, just say maybe kind of careful. One, two, one, two, one, two. Just, yeah, without touching it. Yeah, unfortunately, there may be some seconds. Yeah, I'm not going to touch anything. Okay. I forgot what I was saying about before we went. Oh, you were saying about Obama. No, no, no. I mean, uh. Oh, we were talking about lawyers and. Yeah. You were talking about the settlement and lawyers. Oops, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. But if you don't remember, it's not that important. Yeah. Let's exactly. go to the Olympics and World Cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Segway into World Cup. All right. Here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bernd Glenn. Score! Score! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First, we got one. Okay, uh, we get to the second commercial break. We asked this trivia question. Again, we're talking about sports oddities here. Which two countries are the only ones to have competed since the modern Olympics started in 1896? Well, in every Olympics. In every Olympics. I would say Greece, Greece? and England. No. No. Fran France? No. Yes. No. Uruguay. No. Uruguay. I don't know. No. Germany. No. <laughs> Austria. Australia. 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 Oh, Australia. That's amazing. Oh, okay. Australia. Wow. I spent a month in Australia. Right in those kangaroos. Greece and Australia. Oh, I know. You're talking about steroids. Yeah. Before we went off. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I used to work out with this one guy, and I think that you guys have heard this story. Was he roided up? Uh, no. Oh, no okay. He would judge bodybuilding contests, right? And and I was kind of starting to get a little bit, you know, my wife teased me that if I didn't stay in shape. When I was 50, she was going to trade me in for two 25-year-olds. So I was working out, and, um, you know, we worked out together, and she was, you know, talking about steroids, I go, you know what, I wish people would accuse me of being on steroids. He goes, hey, your age, be happy to get accused of being on the Atkins diet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's about right. Uh, okay. And what, and what was saying earlier, he didn't have a lot of fun with, with the steroid era, did you? I mean, it really, it really... No, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't complain. I, I don't see the problem. Did you ever read uh, Jim Bowden's Ball Four? Oh, yeah. And, and he's talking about the 1969 pilots. And he mentioned that Seattle pilots, yeah, Seattle Seattle pilots. pilots. Yeah. He, he's trying to come back, and and in it he mentions that sixty percent of the ball players would do greenies. Yeah, and this was a big thing in, oh, in yeah. nineteen seventy one when it came sure. out. But greenies were speed. Yeah, that was speed. They were doing speed. You know, after a night game and they're sure. coming back for a day, day game. game. Yeah. yeah. So. None of these old ball players. No one ever asked Hank Aaron if he ever did greenies. You know, nobody would have the, the well, cojones to ask. Willie Mays used to do a thing where he would drink what was called his red juice. Yeah, drink his little uh, his little pick me up. You know, I mean, everybody drank well, coffee. Know. Nobody, nobody knows. knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, well, <laughs> Babe Ruth. I mean, Babe Ruth was drinking during Prohibition. And yeah. it was seen, oh, yeah. look at how cute and cuddly he is. Yeah. So hot dogs yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I got out loads of the bellyache heard around the world, which actually wasn't a bellyache. You know, he was. I mean, now we can say this because he's been gone forever, but he had some kind of indiscretion with a woman and got some kind of oh, uh, syphilis. Yeah, yeah, some kind of sexual disease. Oh. And that's what put him in, in the hospital with the bellyache from eating too many hot dogs. It wasn't the hot dogs. Actually. Oopers. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Uh, Bernie, you wouldn't ask a, it was going to be a non-sports uh, question, but that, I thought. Oh, I did, from Will, yeah, I'm just wondering what what. Political figure, have you gotten the most mileage out of in your comedic career? Carter, <clears throat> there was, and I, and I go back to the Carter days, uh, but Carter was not good uh, because, uh, but Reagan was great because Reagan had a sense of humor about himself, yeah. and then Bush, and then Clinton was wonderful, you know, because it was the whole womanizing thing, mm -hmm. and he was, you know, he was a big that corpulent womanizer and the, and then the golden age was George W. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I, I carry these little three by five cards around with me, you know, <laughs> taking notes. At the end of the Bush administration I had both sides full of verbatim quote. Just verbatim quote. One was, I think we can all agree the past is over. Yeah. And one was the problem with the French is they don't have a word for entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, Very good. And, and Obama is tough because he's so clean. There's no scandal. You know, uh, Bush had scandals mm -hmm. and, and Clinton had scandals. But Obama, you know, being a black guy in a white guy's world, you know, I mean, he's had to, you know. Navigate he, through all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know, like sure. a sparrow <laughs> slaloming through a chain link fence. And, <laughs> and he's been, he's been so, and, and, and they hate him so badly. And that, Why and do you that, think that is? Why does everybody hate the guy so much? No, it's it's is it's, it a re, is it reaction to what? It's, it's a reactionary thing. I mean, yeah. it happened to Kennedy. Yeah. Know, if you remember that, oh, yeah. it didn't happen to Johnson. No, you know, because Johnson had the weight. Johnson, you know, the sword of Damocles hanging yeah. by horsehair over your head. I mean, when you say anything, and also a dead president. 
And it happened. It happened to uh, Nixon. Nixon. It happened to Nixon. There was, uh, and it happened. It didn't happen to Bush. It didn't. Ha- it Bush, happened a little Bush, bit to Bush. Reagan, but not not, not the same Bush as it happened to Clinton. You're, you're yeah. saying Bush Senior? Yeah, it yeah. didn't happen to Bush. Which senior. one's been the most self-deprecating? The one that just says, "All right, I get it. I'm an open target. I can, I can, I can take the job seriously, but maybe not myself." Reagan. Seriously. Reagan. Reagan. Reagan had the best sense of humor. Yeah. Okay, but moving on here for just a minute because we gotta get back to sports. Yeah, right? that's what that's where we're Oh. Dutch, Dutch Reagan, a former sportscaster himself. That's yeah. right. Oh, Starting yeah. his college yeah. Cubs yeah. games. Des, yeah. Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. yeah. Okay, have you heard? Over um, the telegraph. That's right. Calling would, the Cubs games re- over the telegraph. Recreating. Yes. Recreating. Here's right. the pitch. And they yeah. 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 They would. They, they hit a little thing. <laughs> they would re- they the would, re- yeah, they'd reenact the game. Yeah, they, were yeah. actually, they were actually doing the that. Episode. There was there was a guy named Bob Robertson I worked with up in Seattle who's still around. And Bob actually was recreating games 30 years ago, even recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. They did that on yeah. one time in an episode where they tried to get Frank Burns. That was the oh. episode, yeah. Get, yeah. Get Frank Burns was winning these games. Yeah. Uh, he he bet these guys, but he would hear the broadcast oh. before, like before the night there. before. Oh, oh. Boy. So and this, Yeah, so yeah. Trapper John Hawkeye, they got wise to it, recreated a game so he would lose all his money. Oh, okay. so that was We're great. Good one. Okay, have you guys heard of this? <laughs> 17, I think he's 17 years old. His name is Sam Bennett. He's a top hockey prospect, and he failed the physical part. You know why? He couldn't do one pull-up. What? Wow. He couldn't do a single pull-up? He couldn't do a single pull-up. He's 17 years old. Wow. He's a hockey phenom. I don't know if I'd be doing that. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, I, I couldn't before, but I started practicing. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah on, a good, sure. on a good day, I can do 50 pull-ups. Wow. wow. It helps to lose weight, but yeah. you gain weight, and mm. you're a younger man. And it happens. Yeah, yeah, right. That's it. But I was, teasing, I was teasing these guys before about how, you know, when you go to the gym, you, you put your headphones on, you listen to music. Be careful of what put on your iPod. Somehow someone put, you know, I feel pretty. Oh. So pretty. And I, I was doing, uh, you know, I was doing pull-ups to like a Rocky theme. And then on comes Barry Manilow and I dropped like a noodle. You know? Wow. I'm in New England. I said, who put this on? I almost got beat up by a 12 year old. Okay. Uh, okay. So now there's also, remember the, all the concussion stuff we've been talking about? Uh, so some former NFL players are filing lawsuits for drugs illegally. Given that uh, that's illegally. right. You heard about like that. Jeremy Newberry, the 49ers. Right. Was exactly. it Tor- Toradol? Is that the drug uh, word that they was, he was Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah. That they would just hand these things out like candy. Painkillers. Yeah. Oh, you don't feel good here. Yeah. Pre- like if it's like preemptive yeah. painkillers. Yeah. So you don't yeah. know that you got hurt. Yeah. So it, oh, it wow. shoots through you. Yeah, they, they shoot you up with it. Not after you get hurt, not after you uh, that, bruise that, a knee or something. That sounds so dangerous. Like, yeah. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Here's the thing, though, about football players, and I, I understand and I'm, I'm very sympathetic, but at the same time, they're getting into a brutal, violent sport. They must know. Oh, yeah, they signed, gonna, up they yeah. signed up for it. They signed up for it. I mean, you know, these guys that are, I, I, I totally get why they're trying to, you know, claim some money, uh, damages. I mean, it, they deserve it. But well, they'll, they'll do anything to yeah. stay on the field yes. because they know if you're off the field, someone else is coming. Can you imagine? Job. Can you imagine? This is pressure. Can you imagine in your job if your employer had a draft where they drafted someone in your position yeah. every year yeah. and it was all performance based? Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Well, what was the name of the guy who uh, got hurt? He was the first baseman for the Yankees and this kid. Named Lou Gehrig. Yeah, That's Wally Pitt. Pitt. Yeah. Wally Pitt. Yeah. Wally Pitt. Yeah. Wally Pitt. Who was a pretty good player. He, he got hurt. Yeah. He got hurt. He stepped all out to sit out this yeah, one this, game. This yeah. Yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. He'll, he'll be gone. No in kidding. Yeah. 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 I'll come back and get my job. Sure. Yeah. And it never wow. happened. And now Willie's 90 years old, and now he can't have his job back. Wow. <laughs> See, that's the great thing about comedy. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, there are young comics coming along, but nobody's going to take Will's job. Come on. No, nobody wants to do political material. No. It's funny because there are conservative comics. But none of them do political material mm. because they're so smart in terms of finances and stuff. They realize it is not, not the greatest show to the big two. <laughs> you know, so Larry Miller is a little to the right of a two yeah. of the Han. You know, he's a great guy, though. Hey, yeah. having said that, do you have to be careful about the gigs you choose? I mean, what? I mean, what if you get an audience that's not politically savvy? Well, it's funny, Vernon, because I go, I go to Wisconsin, and when I go back to Wisconsin, I'm a commie, pinko, yellow red. You know, I, I'm just, but back in San Francisco, I'm a Nazi because, you know, I'm going to be careful. Gonna be careful. Yeah. Yes. Oh, these people are so, they're, they're so left. Wow. You know, my biggest problems are in Orange County mm. and Berkeley. 
mm, wow. at Berkeley because I shoot semi down the middle. You know, I'm a little left of center, obviously. Because a little? Of, yeah. Well, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying compared to San Francisco. But you're a conservative, so you're looking at that from that point of view. He is left of you, yeah. but generally speaking, Will is, you yeah, know, yeah. a moderate left. Yeah, lefty. yeah. I just yeah. I take out who's ever in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's my job. I'm an opposition butt for. That's what I'm Ooh. there to do. Get under the saddle. It's a kind of annoy the rider. It's a contrarian. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, what about the, this 11-year-old girl making the LPGA? I heard about that. L yeah, she's yeah. right from from the Bay Area. Great story. Yeah, Lucy right. Lee. I mean, she not only can she not Lucy Lou. No, <laughs> Lucy Lee. Yeah. Not Lou. I just saw Lucy Lou the other night on a really? Kill Bill One. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Lucy this girl Lou. can't. She can't see. She can't drive. She can't get into R-rated movies. She can barely get into Disney World. You put a club in her hands, though. She's a genius. Yeah. But, but the worst thing about this yeah. is she's, she's peeking out too this early. Tall. Yes. Join the LPGA. She's peeking out too early, though. What's, you know, she she hits this high plateau. What's going to happen when she turns 16? It's like Michelle Wee. I'm going to turn Michelle Wee. Yeah, yeah. 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 Michelle Wee, we hardly ever well, get I, her I, I, I think one of the things that happened yeah. with Michelle Wee was, I mean, so, so much happened so fast. Yeah. She signed that huge million-dollar contract with Nike, and then there's all this pressure. Of, of of having to justify, she had the sixty minutes, did twenty minutes on her. I mean, it was yeah. uh, it was amazing. Yeah, but she so went to back to Stanford. Yeah, yeah, she did. And and, she, and now she's playing well. well. Yeah, she yeah. came in second in the yeah. tournament a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. she's coming she back. Was, I think she was. Wasn't she fourteen when she did that? Yeah, fourteen or fifteen. Now she's what twenty three. Yeah, like but I mean, this one's eleven years old. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe she, you know, it's but they, but they are they are doing the right thing because because I I I, I mean, it takes one to know. I mean, we 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 all wanted to do features on her because yeah. she's geographically close yeah. and her parents stepped in and went, oh, no, 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 no we're going to, no, well, good. yeah, yeah, I'm we're, glad, we're, we're, we're going to hold that. this well, off, do you remember keep Tiger, in mind she's 11. Tiger on the Mike yeah. Douglas yeah. show? Yeah, when yeah. it was two. Yeah. 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 Well, here's the funny thing is, he, at and his name old. was Tiger Woods. Yeah. <laughs> is that the best golf name <laughs> yeah. ever? It is. Well, it's better than Eldrick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. His, his given name, yeah. Yeah. Magic Johnson. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with his dad, by the way, Vernon, and Tiger Woods' father? Oh, Earl, when he was around. Yeah, yeah. No, I never met him. Oh my gosh, oh, never man. met him. Okay. Ooh, tough. It's a very tough. Ralph Barbieri and him. When I was working at KNBR, Ralph Barbieri and him came nearly came to blows. Really? Well, not good. they were on the phone, so they couldn't. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, I remember that the, the the vitriol was just you know it was so. Thick. I know, but Ralph's voice. Tiger Woods, Dad. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very, it almost sounds like Elmer Fudd in a way. You know, he, 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 that's all. No, no offense, Rob. No, well, what's what's it like working with her parents? Do they keep they keep they keep you away? You mean in the case of the yeah, Lucy Lee? Lee? Yeah. yeah, they they just they just recognize hey, look, we want to do this right. They don't want to Michelle we her yeah. because because I mean we. Yeah. My station called, all the Bay Area station called, is, 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 right, after, a right after she went to the Masters and won that little kids' yeah, yeah. Masters thing. See, and here's the funny thing. She's so young, she almost might not know the pressure. I mean, I, I've taught yeah. soft, mm. softball to girls, Love right? It. And us coaches and stuff are, like, biting our nails. Yeah. It's getting so close. And the girls are just going out there yeah. having fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, it's great. Let the That's the way it should be. Like, That's the way it should That's be. That's the way it should be. All right, guys, we're going to cut to our third and final commercial Oh, break. we got a question? We do. No, oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. Sitting, are you I'm done. We're, 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 <laughs> we're leaning forward. Leaning forward. Okay. Good. This one's kind of, kind of different. All right. The 1990 New York Yankee pitching staff set an all-time record with the fewest complete games. Ooh, how many? All right. Wow. That's the question. For three emails with the correct answer, and it's anywhere from zero. To 162. Okay. That's, that's the Thanks hint. for the hint. Thanks for the hint. Jeez. Okay. God, I'm the first three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Just, just, a, just, a, wee, just a wee bit. Just a wee okay, bit. the first three emails, uh, correct answer, on a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort email. Edward at sportsbeatpod101.com. The answer to this question, uh, the 1990 New York Yankee pitching staff set an all-time record with the fewest complete games. How many? And Sparky Anderson, the quick hook, was not their coach. Mm. All right, don't touch that dial when Sports Econ 101 comes back, we're going to have some closing comments. It's went we're at quick. the end already? We're at the end. Man. Oh. That's for a World Series winner, though, right? 1990, no, 1990 it was, was, uh, the it was A's Reds, 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 Reds yeah. in the World Series. Oh, oh that's four right. Straight. Mm -hmm. A's got swept. Yeah. Oh, so nice. depressed. They, 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 they had mowed through Boston, yeah. and uh, and according to La Russa, who I just spoke to recently, he said, yeah, Cincinnati came, and then and, and, and we just felt like we were just too big for our bridges. Yeah. And then they and they and they hammered us. 
Well, yeah. they, and the first two games were fairly close, and then they came to Oakland and just kicked the crap out of them. Mm-hmm. Both Save games. Out. That's why I'm still out. pissed at that earthquake. Because yeah. Yeah. we could have beaten Wells. Oh, yeah. You know, but Stewart and Stewart and Moore. Yeah. And then they, they ran out Stewart and Moore 12 days later. You know, I, I was teasing these guys. I, uh, I got married three days before the quake. Who thought we caused it? Yeah. <laughs> There's an apocryphal story. I don't know if this is true. But uh, some kid had gone to the, in the Candlestick parking lot, stolen a Porsche out of, like, that uh, that A uh, parking lot, and, and it was underneath the Cypress Freeway Ooh. right when it crashed out. Oh, now, you think of that no. Cypress Freeway. You uh, think that freeway yeah. at 5.04 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. during a day, right. and, and that no. thing came crashing down. If it hadn't on, been on the Giants and the A's, so, so many, many. Oh, so so many. people would have Hundreds, thousands. Maybe thousands, thousands. yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Uh, that was a, what, a quarter-mile stretch? That yeah, that mm-hmm. was over like a mile. You get the wild oh, story mile. Uh, for us was um, the guy who was pastoring our church uh, is, is a, a surgeon, and he worked on, he got called, he literally had to cut the, let's see, he had, people he, had to, he had to cut this woman in half to get through. She had to get the, the mother had died. Oh, and she had to cut her half, cut her oh, to get to the kid. How about Buck Helm? Remember Buck Helm? He was in there for five days before they found him and pulled him out. He, was, yeah, he lived for like that. a month, and then he was just too, his organs were too badly uh, damaged. Yeah. yeah, He was in, in there for five days. Bruce, were you in Candlestick when it happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Because Where were you, Will? I was in the parking lot. Yeah, I was in the parking lot. I had taped something for CNN and, you know, just like uh, random stuff. And I put the camera in the trunk of the car and all these car alarms started going off. Yeah. And you wow. heard this roar and you thought it was, because you're so close to the airport, I thought it was. Another. Oh, yeah. And then, and it was, the parking lot was like that. It was like someone had snapped the towel, just this yeah. roll going through. And I actually had to put my arms out to keep my mouth. Were you in? Were you in the? Uh, I was. The boat? I, I was. I was not here yet. I was in Baltimore, Maryland. I was working at CBS in Baltimore, uh, watching on TV when it when it happened. Dude, we were in Hawaii on our honeymoon, and we were getting ready for dinner. Three and, years. Yeah, and, and we're watching. Uh, we're watching. The, my wife was getting ready. Says, "Hey, I'm going to start watching the World Series." Mm-hmm. And sure enough. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was upstairs, right at, right in the upper deck, uh, and walking to my seat. And, and I was still repressed. I was still repressed. All of a sudden, I noticed I was looking up, and there was a uh, airliner way up there, and this roar. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I thought, oh, that's kind of funny. The airliner is making that much noise. Yeah. Ricky yeah. said Ricky yeah. was inside the clubhouse, and he thought it was just like the crowd. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what because happened was, was after the after serious. the shaker, the crowd went nuts. The crowd went, oh, yeah. like that. Because like they, they were thought, using yeah. it against yeah. the A's. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, yeah. we survived yeah. this. Well, and it wasn't for about 15 minutes that anybody knew that it was that bad. Because yeah. then we saw this big plume of smoke from the uh, fire in the in the marina. marina yeah. And then oh, the we news, heard the, the marina was on fire. Right, right. a block of the marina was on fire. Yeah. We heard the marina was on fire. You know what they heard? We that heard the east? Bay Bridge had fallen. Right. That one yeah. segment. Yeah. Yeah. We heard the Bay Bridge. Sitting in the Golden Gate Bridge is what people from back east. They, they thought heard. they heard the boat like both bridges fell. fell My in. dad's watching the game. Yeah. And, and he knew I was there because it was the first World Series game of my life. You know what Ralph Fucking said? Fucking earthquake. Oh. What are the odds? Yeah. Yeah. Ralph went on the air, and believe it or not, a couple of days later and said, Hey, you know, I realize everybody's upset. Uh, you know, the games have been put back. But, you know, let's put this in perspective. I mean, 36 people lost their lives. There's only been a minimal property damage. I mean, we're making a big deal about something that's not that big a deal. And I was thinking, Ralph, you know, that's not the time to do it. 36 people have died. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know. Not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. Ralph right? uh, got himself in trouble a few times, and that was one of them. Yeah, well, yeah, we got yeah, we got the open just like your dad was watching, and then we got Ted Koppel for the rest of the night, and uh, until they were able to get uh, Al Michaels in the truck hooked up, yeah. and he was able to voice over right. pictures that the blimp yeah was was transmitting. Yeah, oh no, yeah, that's exactly. what we got that's for the rest of the night. From, well, we were doing yeah. wall to wall pregame coverage on KNBR, and Steve Bitker was up anchoring it, and I'm down there getting all the interviews, bringing him back up, shuttling him up. And finally, everybody was had left the ballpark. We were the last, I guess there were yeah. like five or six yeah. people left. So I piled everybody into my car. Somehow, everybody didn't have a car. To, and we're driving through Hunter's Point, and the traffic was, you know, wall to wall. And, oh, you could, sure. and, and the dumb. homeless guys, the cops are giving the homeless guys those flashlights with yeah. the red beacon. Homeless guys are directing traffic because yeah. there's no street lights. No street lights, no lights yeah, at no all. No lights at all, yeah. No lights at all. Yeah, so, yeah for a night. 
And uh, but uh, kind of the weirdest thing was about three days later, uh, or no, about a week later. You remember that that California Street, that big uh, crane that fell down and smashed into yeah. the ground and killed that woman. That woman was a friend of my roommate's, and she'd stayed overnight at our house during the earthquake. And uh, two weeks later, she was killed when that crane came crashing down. And all that. It was that was weird. That was just yeah, too bizarre. How did you die? Didn't you yeah. Fall on you? Yeah. Crane yeah. Fell on me. Yeah. 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 Wasn't Ralph's comment though was more to kind of say let's put you know who, who cares if baseball is being no played? he was saying you know, we should get back to playing baseball oh well, that's what he was saying oh, oh he was he, oh, he was coming from the oh. yeah well it was twelve Less, days wasn't it it was twelve yeah. days and by the time they oh, came yeah. back I mean the fact the fact was that outside of the Bay Area nobody cared the ratings yeah. were the worst of, in all time and then when they came back the thing was the Giants stayed in the area and did a lot of community work the A's were so serious they didn't want to lose they went down to Arizona and had what Tony LaRusso called like a boot camp. Wow. And we, he said, we met, I made sure these guys stay focused. We did not want to lose this World Series. Well, after 88, yeah. you know, Gibson and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And they kicked the crap out of the Giants. Oh. They did. Mm-hmm. They really did. Oh, they were, funny, they were so much better at team. Well, when we were getting married, that was going to be the first day of the World Series. And uh, my, I told my wife, I said, she said, well, we're going to have to do this time and this time. I said, sweetie, I said, understand. Four o'clock, the World Series. <laughs> and I don't know. I said, listen, I, I, said, what? I said, listen, no, no, I'm, I'm with you. I said, but remember, you and I are getting married. All of our friends and family, they, they want to be with us, but not for that long, yeah. you know? And she, she, You're getting she married in Hawaii? Hawaii? No, we got married here. Oh. Yeah, right at the yeah. Office Club. Yeah. The, the day of the, of the first That's where reception yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, we'd set that up. You know, oh, I tried to call the Russo and say, hey, push the game down. <laughs> my joke my joke then uh, was, because I talked about it on stage, I said, we, I, you know, we didn't know what had happened. We thought Rick Rush would have fallen down in the dugout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, too, too many last Big fella. Yeah. yeah. Rick Rush. Or Ken Seiko had dropped his ego. We didn't yeah. Know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what I wanted to bring up. Okay, oh. so quick, we have just a quick minute here. Okay. I Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, last time I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, mm-hmm. Bruce McGowan, yes, sir. and a special guest, Wilder. That's me. That's your third final trivia question. The 1990 New York Yankee pitching staff set an all-time record with the fewest complete games. How many? Four. Six. One. Three. Three! <laughs> no. Or six, you one, know three. I, I gotta say, that, that's, I'm pretty impressed, though, you know? Uh, Except for six. Who said six? I did. Terrible. <laughs> that was single. It was, low, you know, single figures. No, I, yeah. That's very good, though. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the A's are going to have a 25-year reunion for the 1989. Yeah, I know. All yeah. the Giants fans. Well, they honored the 74 guys the yeah. other day. And the thing is, you know, with 89, you know, they're saying, hey, we're going to invite Cam Seiko back. And sure, you know, they might get a lot of booze. But that's what I want to see. I want to see. I have to invite him back. I have to invite McGuire yeah. back. I want to see oh, if he comes yeah, back, yeah, and I want to see the reception he gets. Yeah, exactly. By the teammates. Now, guys like McGuire. Uh, may not make it, and I guess Walt Weiss because uh, Cause Cause, they're because they're coaching with other yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you think that the, the uh, team would let him out for you know? Yeah, you think so. Nah, yeah. That, yeah. Ricky will be back though. That's again, yeah. Eckers, <laughs> Ricky, 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 Ricky. I can still so play. I can still so play. He <laughs> probably could. You need a runner. <laughs> well, I told Billy Bean. I said, right. I said, if you need the guys get hurt, I can still throw in the high sixties. Okay. So thoughts for the day. Olympic badminton rules say that, that a birdie has to have exactly fourteen feathers. My question is, who counts these things, uh, right? Boy, that's a job. That, that's, I guess yeah. someone's got a job. Okay, and many Japanese golfers carry hole-in-one insurance because it is traditional in Japan to share one's good luck by sending gifts to all your friends oh, when really? you get an ace. Oh, really? The price wow. for that Japanese term, an albatross, can often reach $10,000. So when I got a hole-in-one and I heard that, I was 19 years old, I knew about this, I said, I'm not telling anybody. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had a friend with me who was a witness. Uh. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and you still remember what it was? A par three, hundred and sixty-five yard hole. What did you use? Uh, five irons. Yeah. Ooh. And, and where was this? At the, the old Las Colinas Golf Course. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because he always remember. And I still remember that friend, so he'll back me up. Cool. All right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. <laughs> we'll be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away more free vacations for answering sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Martini. I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. So long. So you're going after the Pacific game tonight? Pacific, Pacific's open or tonight? Oh, really? He's got a yeah, gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just got a gig, man. Saturday. What's that? I missed.